From the Crush Studio in sunny Florida, this is the Disney Crush Podcast. And now your two Tempests in a teacup, Dave and Tony Ann. On this week's The Disney Crush Podcast, the four-park challenge. Have you ever done a four-park challenge? Would you want to do a four-park challenge? We talked to three friends who recently did four-park challenges, and we find out what their goals were and if they accomplished them. Episode 329 of the Disney Crush Podcast is starting now. So let me just tell you, I, I saw your little video. You, you gave Veronica this giant stuffed bear and everybody else was commenting. Oh, how cute. Oh, you did good. And I thought exactly while I'm watching it, I'm thinking, where the heck are they going to put that thing? They live in an RV. And Veronica said exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, it, 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 it might end up in our house or <laughs> okay. at some point. We might take it to our house and leave it there. Yeah, because the RV is just not conducive for that. To and a it, gigantic it, teddy bear. Yeah, and I'm going to post a picture here. Well, you'll already see it if you guys follow us in, on our Facebook group, the Disney Crush Facebook group, Friends of the, the Disney Friends Crush. Friends of the Disney Crush. The Friends of the Disney Crush. Uh, I might post a picture because, you know, in that little video, she did say, uh, it's going to sleep on the couch with me because she always ends up getting up middle uh-huh. 12, 2 o'clock in the morning, go out on the couch and sleeping because she can't sleep. Yep. And I, I got a picture of Ted. I've called him Ted. His name's Ted Because it's like Ted. That, like, yes. Yeah, with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> so he's on a couch. Yeah. And it's he takes up the whole couch. That thing is huge. I'm sure. So here's the thing. There's a quick story behind this This Ted, this new Ted, her new teddy bear. Okay. And it, it, you can't tell in, in the pictures, of course, of the video, but it's very, very soft. It's one of those stuffed animals that's this, it's just very soft. The, the you know, whatever they make. Microfiber or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, whatever they make it might be. It's very soft. I walked into a store and they had him displayed on a chair with chocolates and balloons and mm-hmm. all kind of stuff. And I walked in, I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a cool bear. Anyway, so I went and got my stuff and I paid for it and I left and I went, you know what? I should get that bear for Veronica. So I went back to the store. Jody, is that bear for sale or is it just a display? She goes, no, it's just for sale. I'm like, well, I don't want to take your display because you got it so nice. I said, do you have any more in the back? And she goes, no, that's the only one. I'm like, all right, I want it. Mm-hmm. So that's, so I picked it up. That's how, that's how I got that bear. Cause I'm like, I got to have that bear. Mm-hmm. I just, I got to have it. I said, you don't have any more? Like, you can just replace it? I felt so bad. We had to take the balloons off. We had to take the candy away and stuff. She's like, no, don't worry about it. It's okay. No, she's very cool. So shout out to to Jody, who doesn't listen to us, but whatever. Anyway. (laughs) Apparently, we have people who do listen to us because we got a new Patreon supporter this week. We want to send a shout out and a thank you to Holly Savitsky. Thank you so much. We were so surprised. Thank you very much. And hopefully, I will see you at the Princess 5K next week. Dave, the 5K is coming up. Actually, when this show comes out, I'll be leaving the next day for mm. Disney. I don't know how we're going to record next week. We're going to have to figure that out. We might have to stick another one in this weekend because I won't be home on Thursday, next Thursday. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll figure, yeah, we can always do it a day before. Or you and Veronica it, could do one without me. Well, Actually, yeah. I was thinking of doing a show, and maybe you could bring Karen on. I was thinking about doing a show about off-site properties. Maybe mm. you and Karen could. Mm-hmm. Maybe you guys can talk to Karen about it. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. We'll, you guys, we'll yeah. Entertain that, that idea. idea. It might be a good idea. Okay. And I, I'm really excited. Hopefully I'll see you guys see you in at the Princess 5K or around Disney next week. I have to send out some apologies because we talked about birthdays last week. And this is why I need to like steer clear of birthdays. Because I accidentally said that Kevin Curtis Allen's birthday was on the fourth and my friend Kim Harmel's birthday was on the fifth. And actually Kevin's birthday is on the 5th and Kim's birthday is on the 6th. And I was off by a day for both of them. So, and I heard it from Kevin. Kevin said, Kevin said, I bet you never forget Andy's birthday. hmm. And I said, I don't even know when Andy's birthday is. But then I looked it up, of course. So now I do know when Andy's birthday Mm -hmm. is. It's in July. But (laughs) but when Kevin gave me guilt and grief, I didn't know when Andy's birthday Hmm. was. I should have asked Michael. I don't think you even know your own birthday or how old you are. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. I did a live stream the day and I said, oh, I'm turning 57. 50, I'm turning 52. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I mean, Veronica, luck, what, we're watching that. We're like, no, she's not that old. <laughs> the, what? She's not that old. What the heck is she talking about? I said, well, actually, I said 57th birthday instead of 52nd birthday. It yeah, like came and, out and wrong. 
Right. And then Bronca said, well, maybe it just sounds like that. No, I can't. said, I went back and listened. I was like, I really I did, did say 57th. And I, I meant know, 52nd. I re listened to it. I said, no, no, she said it. She said it. She doesn't even know how old she is. Come 52nd. On. It's yeah. going to be my 52nd birthday on Friday. I am doing the Princess 5K. And then, quite possibly, and that's part of why this topic is tonight's show, I might do a four park challenge that night but i have dinner reservations at five so i might not <laughs> but i no, might because no. the park's open at seven thirty that morning yeah but still you'll be i mean here's oh, we're going to talk about in the show so i don't want to get too okay. far into it okay. but yeah you, yeah, yeah. I'm but considering you could it. do it you could do it but mm, i think okay, you'd just yeah. be really running yeah. around like a chicken with your head cut off yeah we'll see so there is a little bit of news, but it's not really news, but there's a little bit of news. Okay, it's well, the news that wasn't news. Hmm. This is, should be interesting. Well, Disney announced that Tiana's Bayou Adventure is opening. And all of these news outlets are saying, we finally have an opening date for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. No, we don't. It's opening summer of 2024. That is not a date. Summer of 2024 could be as early as Memorial Day weekend which is when they opened uh, Pandora. It could be as late as September 22nd. So summer 2024 doesn't tell us anything. Well, they do that all the time. You know, the Gwendolyn Rogers Cake Bake Shop, which is replacing the ESPN on the boardwalk, that was supposed that's supposed to be opening early 2024. And from the looks of it, early 2024... Might be December. Mm -hmm. yeah. How dare they? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I'd like. I want it to open though, because I I'm really excited about it. But they should have just left ESPN. That's what they should have done. Well, yeah. Well, no. Come mm -hmm. on, you used to love that place. I used oh, to like. Yeah, I did used to like it. You're right. And I, you know, I never got there. Yep. All right. I do have a little bit of other news. If you've noticed, if you've been in Hollywood studios lately, maybe you're sitting at Baseline Tap House looking across the walkway and you see where the bathrooms are for Muppet or across from Muppets. There's been a big wall for several months and that will be opening soon. I'm thinking any day now because they they released a name and photos and a menu, the ice cold hydraulics. It's called, it's it's going to be a Coke-based snack stand. It's going to have frozen Coke products, and it's going to have little Coke-related snacks. It's going to have two treats. It's going to have candy-painted cinnamon rolls, which are mini cinnamon rolls topped with Coca-Cola-infused glaze and tossed nuts. So there's going to be Coke-infused nuts. <laughs> And then there's going to be a savory treat, which is the bouncing mini churros, which are savory churros topped with Coca-Cola and bourbon candied bacon, sriracha aioli, and scallions. That's going to be coming to Hollywood Studios any day now, across from Baseline Tap House, across from Muppets. It's in that corner. And uh, yeah. Okay. Hmm, well, it's going to be a Coke it, stand. Anything frozen you want to add? I like frozen Coke, so. <clears throat> add whatever you want, uh, as long as you got space for it there. And, for it. Yeah. And since it's Hollywood Studios, I would imagine that these frozen Coke products, you probably will have the option to put a floater in because it's Hollywood Studios. Mm. Got to have a floater. Yeah. All right. That's the news. I do have um, I do have some, some internet-related stuff. Uh, the internet or uh, Facebook? Yeah, it's Facebook. It's Facebook. Yeah. The, inter the internet's? Social media. The good, the bad, and the ugly of social media. Oh, this week's the good, the bad, and the ugly of Facebook. Pew, 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 pew. Bing. A little bit of content for you right here coming up. Thank you, Tony Ann. Go for it. All right. 
I've been stewing on this for a few weeks and just can't shake the frustration I felt when we were in Magic Kingdom back in January. We had forgotten about the splash pad area. We had taken our grandson, who's five, to Magic Kingdom for his birthday. We were on the train and stopped at the splash pad area. He saw it and wanted to go play. We promised him that we would. We make our way back over there later in the day. Mind you, we didn't have a change of clothes for him because we forgot about the area. So his mom decides to let him play for a bit while I go in search of a towel and a change of clothes for him. This is where I almost canceled my annual pass. I went to several gift shops. Nowhere could I find clothes for a little boy. They have everything for little girls, but nothing for little boys. Why is this? The little princes are just as important as the little princesses out there. We ended up leaving early and he didn't get to fully finish the park or see the fireworks. Sorry, rant over. I figured there was an answer out there and this might be a good place to start. So she's going to cancel her annual pass because there's no clothes for little princes in Magic Kingdom. Hmm. I don't know what to tell her. I don't know. First of all, she's not correct. You can get little bathing trunks and T-shirts for little boys in the Emporium. I've seen them many times. But I I do get that. And as a mother of boys, I had two boys when they were little. We went to Disney. There were no really boy-centric character meals where there were definitely princess character meals. Um you know, you had the Fab Five, but that's, you know, they're pretty gender neutral. Is that, I don't know if that's the proper term, but it is a thing with boys. Even even if you go to the Target or Walmart and look in the baby clothes section. Yeah, there's a lot cuter stuff for girls out there. Little girl clothes are more plentiful and cuter than little boy clothes. But I, I don't. I also knew when I had toddlers that I always had a change of clothes for them. Uh, Probably up until, yeah, if there might be a splash pad around or something, definitely. But I always had a change of clothes for my kids when I went to the parks. Yeah, because it only takes that one trip where you need it and you're like, you don't have it and you have to go buy it. That you're like, okay, that's not going to happen again. Right. I, I will never forget. Actually happened in the bathroom where this ice cold hydraulics is going to be now. At Hollywood Studios, I was in that that bathroom by by Muppets over there between Star Tours and Muppets, and uh, there was a lady in the bathroom, and her little boy had had a blowout, like a complete blowout, and his clothes were not salvageable, and um, I had a change of clothes for for Dominic, and I said, "Here, take them, take it, just take them." She was like, "Oh my god!" Uh," But they were. That they were second, nice yeah, but they were probably they were probably secondhand clothes from Michael. So Doesn't they were probably, matter. Don't so, downplay it. Just I say know, thank but, you, Dave. Yeah, thank but you. that was, thank you. but yeah, but you always have a change of clothes for your kids when you go to Disney. You should if you don't. Look, I have a change of clothes for myself, right? Let alone my kids. Well, here's what we're thinking about: in April for Tori's birthday, we're going to this. 80s con that the m80s you've heard scott and karen talk about the yes, m80s, the M80s yeah. 80s cover man i've heard them i was thinking of dressing like 80s and doing my hair mm-hmm. like i used to wear it in sixth grade and wearing clothes like i used to wear in 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 seventh grade and, and middle school then it came up that we might go to a fancy dinner after that and i'm like well i'm gonna have to bring a change of clothes no why just wear that it'd be perfect it'd be great <laughs> i don't know we'll see We'll see. So, All right. Well, see this is going to, I've got go one. I've got go ahead, one. Go ahead. Go ahead. This please. is going to coincide perfectly with what we're going to talk about tonight. Okay. Okay. So excited to be flying in for my four parks in one day trip today. Okay. What's the best order to do this? Hmm. So, of course, you had people chiming in because they're all, everybody's an expert on the internet. Did you know that? That everybody oh, that yes, comments I do. is an I expert. I do know that. Yes. They're oh, all okay. experts. Just making sure. Uh, doing this Saturday, and I'm so excited. The order I have in mind for my solo four part day is Magic Kingdom, then Epcot, Hollywood Studios, then Animal Kingdom, and finishing up the day back in Epcot, and then closing down Magic Kingdom. <laughs> Good luck with that. 
<laughs> yeah, you go for it. Uh, and then someone says, I would do Animal Kingdom first, which I kind of agree with. Yeah. Yeah. And one person said, I want to do one and he wants to do Animal Kingdom first and he wants to do Ed- Everest. But anyway. Yeah, yeah they're kind of gonna... doubling back and around. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a... Um... Yeah. Animal Kingdom usually closes earliest, so it's good. Now, I did... Four, well, we can talk about this when our guests come on. I want to talk about my last four park challenge, but it was a little different. Mm. I had a I had a little bit more time than the most per, most people. Well, I time did. is of the essence because yes, the more time you have, the better you're going to be able to navigate these parks all in a absolutely, day. Absolutely, absolutely. I do have one more Facebook though, Dave. That oh, doesn't go for it. To the four park challenge. Unpopular opinion: the cookies at Gideon's are gross. And standing inside made my clothes stink. Hmm. Has anyone else experienced this? I see the line is long all the time, so we gave it a shot. We waited 30 minutes to get in. Mm -hmm. So here's the the, problem. The cookies are gross, and the inside of the shop made her clothes stink. Mm -hmm. What? Well, she saw the line was long, so they gave it a shot. That doesn't make sense. (laughs) No, no, no. She said every time... I've been here the long the line was long. I guess I guess it was it wasn't long this time and she oh, said they okay. waited 30 oh, minutes. Okay. Cuz I see that line every time I'm there and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, no. No. I don't need a cookie that bad. Mm-mm. No, I'm not going to do it. Last time we did that, we went there and spent like, I don't know, $5,000 and cookies. we got like five cookies. Mm-hmm. And we ended up not eating them, of course, and we ended up Chopping them up and putting them in the freezer. Do you know that we had those for like over a year? I bet. Yeah. Yep. We, every now and then we just go in there and take a little chunk and then mm-hmm. eat a little bit. Two mm-hmm. months later, we go in there and take another little chunk. No. No. That was the one and done for me. Yeah. Nope. Gideon's can have them. Have those cookies and the cakes. Whatever. It is kind of a cool. It's kind of a cool little area. But Well, we're going to try next week, I think, or maybe in April. I don't know. I'm getting all our trips confused. There's a new cookie bar at Summer House. Mm. The new restaurant, Summer House by the Lake. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, there's, it's a restaurant, it's a bar, and it's a cookie bar. They have a cookie bar. You go in, but their cookies are like a big and flat. They're like you know discs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Okay, so. bar and cookies just for some reason to me doesn't sound like it goes. Well, it's together. like you go up to the bar and you order cookies. Uh, mm, no, I don't know. I go to the bar. I'm, I'm ordering pizza, chicken wings. Okay. All right. I, I don't know the last time I went to the bar and said, hey, can you give me, can I have a uh, gin and tonic with a uh, chocolate chip cookie, please? Thank you very much. I'd do it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. So, this doesn't yeah, go together. That's one me. of the things we're going to probably try next week at some point. So we got a lot we're going to cram into next weekend. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm a little apprehensive. <laughs> hmm. No, <laughs> don't, don't be. Just go for it. We'll see. We'll see. Got a lot of people coming. I think we figured out there's like 15 of us ladies that are going to be there amongst wow. the, the three races. Mm. Some of them are doing all three races, but yeah. But a lot of us are doing the 5K. So, and then Jen Pulliam is coming too. She's not doing any. She's she's the, what I was last year. So next year she'll be she'll be with us because last year Holly and I were follow alongers who didn't actually get out of bed and everybody else ran this year we're participating and Jen Pulliam is going to not not do anything and just be there you know in spirit next year i bet you we get her walking hmm. cool that's my goal when are we going to get you to be a princess dave no uh, i mean i'll be a princess i have no problem being a princess okay i like makeup and dresses i don't care I know. Mm-hmm. yeah I'm good. All right. I'm all down okay. with that. Cool. Lava, lava all day long. Lava, lava. So Dave, as mentioned, we have three guests on to talk about their four park challenge that they did about just about two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were all in Disney the last week in January and uh, they all did a four park challenge. Actually, Andy and Sam did theirs together and Michelle did hers solo, I think. So you were solo, right? I did. Yes. So we have Samantha Kuhn, Andy Hoffman and Michelle Choate. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Michelle, what what dates were you at Disney for that last week there? I was there 
124 through um, February 3rd. Oh, nice. And my, my family went home on the 30th. So I did my four part challenge on the 31st. Oh, cool. So, so you had a little bit more alone time after the family left. Yes. Very Michelle, good. now is this? Have you ever done a four part challenge before, or? I did with my daughter, and I can't remember if it was like 2016 or 2017. We did it, and I can't even. It was one of the trips. It was either for her college graduation or for her high school graduation. I don't remember which one though. Okay. Samantha, you weren't supposed to be there that day but how long did you actually know you were going to be there that day did you for I, months no for no, no weeks? Not for months. maybe like was it the week before I it, was, so. I think it was the week before because i think i remember asking my boss do you see any reason you might need me next thursday <laughs> because as always i extended a trip and right so she I, re- I thought i was running out of vacation days for the year and then i did a little calculations and i realized i had more than i thought i had so and originally when i told her what my plan was how i was going to do it she was like you're not really making this really uh exciting to come join because as tony and i were discussing on when i co-hosted a couple weeks ago <laughs> and i was like i said hey, i'm just going to go do it by myself and at this point i i don't believe i knew she was coming uh-huh. It wasn't coming yet. You were like, you should come early. I'm going to do a four park challenge. Oh, yeah. I'm going to the worst ride in each park. And I was, <laughs> like, I was thinking, that my, sounds terrible. I know, but my thought was I can get it on. I could get on. I was like, I thought, okay, I'll go to like uh, Epcot and do, you know, a single rider for uh, test track. Because despite me thinking it, there is no single rider line for Soren. And then I thought I would just do the, you know, the rides with single riders or the rides nobody likes just to, to make it easy. But obviously, that got changed. Do you know that Andy Hoffman has been listening to Disney podcasts for like eons, and he knows so little about the Disney parks? That's a 100% accurate statement. I think it says a lot, and it's a common theme among the, amongst the men that listen to these podcasts. I mean, David uh, just admitted to it. Not all, but some. I do a podcast about Disney and I absolutely think sometimes I know nothing, especially when Tony Ann or Samantha or somebody like that starts talking about, I'm like, I, I have no idea. I don't like, think. Uh, hey Dave, where is, where is the, uh, where's, Cl- where's Club Cool? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. No, I know it what Club Cool like is. It's like I go off property. <laughs> so Andy, you talked about that you wanted to ride the worst rides. I don't know that Test Track is the worst ride. Did you have any other uh, directives like, plans for for what you wanted to accomplish at each park yeah my plan was to do like one ride one pin trade and one snack at each park you were going to do a pin trade yeah i was because you got me into it and you know i hear you talk about it and selena likes it and <clears throat> wendy likes it and our other friends I'm like oh this is quite fun so i thought i would do the pin trade as part of it but i was like i was limited on or decided i should say on what rides i was going to want to do because i wanted to, be able to accomplish um, the most I could in, you know, in little time. Plus, it's me and I get lost around the park. So, you know, I got to add that extra time in. Absolutely. So, let me just, just say this. As, as a former New Yorker, I know that siren is coming from Samantha, so I'm trying to mute her. <laughs> I'm 12 stories up. When I used to stay at my grandmother's house, when I stayed at my grandmother's house in Brooklyn, it like, it was so loud at night. I just... It, you know, I I lived on well, the island where it was quiet, and I can't sleep places where it's like dead silent. Like even sleeping in the cabins the other weekend was uh-huh. like tough because I don't have all that like ambient noise outside. Did you add anything to Andy's goals? He wanted to accom- when you decided you were coming. Did you add anything to what you wanted to accomplish at each park? Or? I don't remember him mentioning a pin trade when he pitched it to me. <laughs> so obviously I said pin trade. <laughs> that sounds and then I thought right. in my head that I wanted to get a pressed penny from each park. Oh, that's right. I forgot. That's it. part of our adventure. And that was a bad idea because I have an addictive personality. And now I've spent a lot of money on pressed pennies. <laughs> like you spent $40 on something that's worth no, like. 26. I spent $26 on yeah, it's pennies. worth 13 cents. On pennies. <laughs> Something good. good to know about pressed pennies. Okay. If you're getting into the pressed penny hobby, 
if you use a credit card, you have to get all the pressed pennies that that machine has to offer. Mm. Oh. You can't only buy one on a credit card. And of course, I wanted to get pressed pennies, but I didn't think far enough ahead to like bring cash to get them. So. Well, the other interesting thing to know about the modern press penny machines at Disney is you're not actually getting a penny. That's not a penny because Veronica's dad, our father-in-law, m- made went to make her jewelry out of some press pennies, right, Dave? Mm-hmm. And they weren't when he when he drilled into them, they 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 weren't really pennies. The last time I did press pennies at Disney was I think in 2019, and back then they still had some machines that you could like put the you two put your own penny. Machine. Right, you used to put your there own penny. The credit card ones, but they also had some because I was bringing a friend for the first time, and I had given her like sets of like two quarters and a penny to be able to do press pennies. Right. I remember the first few machines we went to were all credit cards, and I was like, "Are you kidding?" Me? People used to save those M and M minis containers yeah. to have two quarters and a penny, two quarters and a penny. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, did you have any goals you wanted to accomplish at each park? I. Didn't really go in there with a lot of plans, but I okay. ended up, I wanted to do at least one ride um, and see one character, take okay. a picture of the icon. And then when these guys were talking about their four part challenge, I decided at the last minute to buy a pin set and trade, do a pin trade. Nice. So, so that's what I did. Very oh, and cool. I did get a snack that was, that you could only get in each park. Like I got the, um, Corn dog nuggets at Magic Kingdom. I guess you can't get those anywhere yeah. else. So. All right, that's kind of what I'm thinking. If we, if I do it for my birthday, is um, what I was thinking was I want to do opening day attract an opening day attraction attraction that was there when the park opened, and I came up against Hollywood Studios. None of the opening day attractions from Hollywood Studios are still open. So what's the then? What would be the oldest attraction? Uh, it's the Indiana Jones stunt show followed by Star Tours. Those both opened in 89 in, in the first year, but they didn't, they weren't open yet when the park opened. When the park opened, it doesn't look like there was much actually open. <laughs> Cause there, there it was wasn't, like, I went the first in September of 89 and there wasn't much there. Yeah. The backlot tour and the, uh, great movie ride are both closed and those were opening day attractions. So I might ha- I might do Star Tours or Indiana Jones. I don't know. We'll see if we do that. But and I had the same idea as you, Michelle. I wanted to try a snack that's unique to that park. But I also put in the added caveat on myself that it was going to be something I'd never had before. So just just a way oh. to add pressure. But you so. watched that that Tim that he who shall not be named Tim Tracker video. had a video. Yes, he had a video this week. He. The month of February, they're having um, Black History Month treats related treats. A lot of them are themed for Tiana. In Magic Kingdom, there's some some interesting treats. They have special beignets that are only out this month. Did you find they've got, they've there? gotten really good reviews. Yeah, they have gotten good reviews. There's a fried green tomato sandwich, but I don't know. Samantha had a fried green tomato sandwich, like little sliders when we were at um I was going to call it Trapper Nelson's, but that is a somebody from Trader the, uh, Sam's. Trader, no, not Trader Sam's. Crockett's Tavern. Crockett's Tavern. Oh, Crockett's Tavern. Yeah, at, at uh, oh, Fort Wilderness. They were so good. Good to know. Go to Crockett's Tavern for your fried green tomato sliders. No, I like Michelle's idea of meeting a character because we didn't do that. And the first time I ever planned to do a four park challenge was with my dad in 2020, and then we mm-hmm. didn't get to do it because we couldn't park up. Um, but his idea was to meet Mickey in each of the parks. I, I actually was thinking about that, but um, the timing wasn't going to work out right. And I met I met Mickey at Animal Kingdom at the first one, but then he didn't open up until later at Epcot when I was okay. there. So I just went with one that was was there. It was freely so. available. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, worked out. The thing about this four part challenge is there's really no set criteria for what you want to do and how you want to do it. It's basically it's a four part challenge. Of course, you need to go to all four parks in one day, mm-hmm. but people add on to it. Some people say, well, we're going to go to each park and, and get a treat. Or we're going to go to the park and do a ride and a treat. or We're going to go right. to the park and get a picture with a character at each park. 
So really it's up to the individual who does this four part challenge on how they want to go about it and Tackle what they want to pretty much yeah, add to, I mean, going to the all four parks is, is enough as it is. I know when I, my daughter and I did it, it was just go to the park. You know, mm-hmm. That was enough for us. We started, we started to th- we say, well, we're going to take a ride. We're going to do a ride and a treat. And then by the second park, we're like, nah, we're done with that. Let's just get to the next park. When we were walking out, I think we were not walking. Was it on maybe Monday or Tuesday, whatever last day I, I, I was there, where we were there, was that Tuesday? There was a group of younger people walking around Hollywood Studios discussing the logistics. Well, we almost got lost because you were gabbing away to somebody. That's right before we met Sully. Yeah, we didn't turn when we were supposed yeah. to turn, and Noreen had to call me and said, I thought we were going to meet Sully. I was like, oh, yeah, Andy involves himself in somebody else's conversation. What logistics did go into it as far as transportation and, and getting around? So we met at, in front of the Skyliner at, at Pop, between you know Pop and Art of Animation that Thursday morning at around 8.15. And we then wanted the to night- do all four types of transportation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the nice part was, since the Epcot line was down, there was absolutely no line. Like, we literally walked on at 8.15 in the morning. Um, Mm -hmm. So we had a quick jaunt, you know, over to get on to to Hollywood Studios. Did the Skyliner there. Then, like this, and then after we left um, Hollywood to go to Epcot, I'm like, well, this is our opportunity to take one of the, the friendship boats. We got a little impatient, and we actually hopped off at the, uh, around, uh, Crescent Lake, right outside of uh, Chris Wutrell's favorite lighthouse. Okay. Um, and then we went from Epcot to Magic Kingdom, and that's when we took the the monorail. Right. And then we had to get from Magic Kingdom back to Epcot for dinner with Deirdre. Yeah, yeah. But then what about we, Animal Kingdom. No, you did this wrong. I did. We t- <laughs> we didn't do that. We Don't listen to Andy. No, Andy. We took. The an Uber from Epcot to Animal oh, Kingdom, right. and then we took the bus from Animal Kingdom to Magic Kingdom, and then we took the monorail from Magic Kingdom back to Epcot at night to meet Deirdre. To meet for Deirdre dinner. for dinner. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> and then did you mention? I seriously, was, I'm not going to lie. To you, wasn't not paying attention. Did we take? Did you mention we took the bus from Animal Kingdom? We took it to the Contemporary <laughs> and walked over. Okay. Oh, I didn't say that we took it to the Contemporary. I forgot about that. But then we were, we were also looking at well, what bus is going to be here first. And as we were right. there, the contemporary bus was getting ready to leave. So we hopped on that. They walked over. The nice part was then you have that smaller security line. Mm-hmm. And I believe when we left Epcot, we went out and we're like, okay, what's going to be quicker? Is it taking an Uber or is it going to be taking the, you know, the, the park transportation over there? And we just hopped on an Uber and that was real, real slick. That actually reminded me of something I saw on Facebook this week that I wanted to mention. If you're staying in the Crescent Lake area, anywhere, the Swan, the Dolphin, the Boardwalk, the Beach Club, the Yacht Club, people ask, like, I'm staying at the Boardwalk. What's my fastest way to get to Chef Mickey's or Ohana? And people are always like, take the bus to Magic Kingdom and then take the monorail to to the Poly or the boat to the Poly. It's actually, you should... You should walk to Hollywood Studios and just get the bus to the pop. That's the fastest way. <laughs> Not go to Magic Kingdom and then, because yeah. yeah, just walk to Hollywood Studios and take the and bus. That, and that walk is is rather fast because when we when I left on Tuesday, mm-hmm. like we took the Skyliner because somebody wanted to go to Epcot and then we were in Epcot for like ten minutes and they're like, "Hey, let's go to Hollywood Studios instead and see our friends." Um, we won't name that person. But then when we took the, the Skyliner, it took forever. It was like yeah. legit darn near 30 minutes. So yeah, then in my. figure the Skyliner takes you back to Caribbean yeah. Beach and then back. And then it stopped a few times. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, I want to. I had to get back to Beach Club mm-hmm. to get my luggage to hop on the plane. So I walked in from, I think, leaving Hollywood Studios. Like once I entered the path to getting to the Beach Club, it was like 17 minutes. So it's actually, like you say, quicker to walk. Yeah. Michelle, I was just w- wondering what transportation, how you did the transportation. Um, I had a rental car, so I did that. But I did Animal Kingdom first, so I did rental car there. And then after that, I think I took, I parked at Epcot because that was the second park I did. And um, 
parked there. And then I took the Skyliner over to Hollywood Studios and back. Okay. And then I think I drove over to Magic Kingdom too. I actually thought about doing the transportation, but I was, but by the time I thought of that, I'm like, no, that would be actually too much extra steps when I've got the car right there. Cause then I'd have to go back and find the car at some point. So I didn't, I didn't bother. All so. right. <clears throat> Did we ask Andy and Samantha, had they ever done one before? Did we ask them that? I've done one. So I had planned one in 2020, never did it. And then Rebecca and I did one, uh, I guess that was in 2022. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, when Bubba, yeah. when Bubba joined, first, you started with Andy and ended with Bubba? First Dapper, yes. At the end of the first Dapper Day trip, it was May 3rd, I think, because then the next day was May the 4th be with you and we went to Hollywood Studios. We did one. And yes, we started with Andy in Magic Kingdom and then we picked up Bubba in Magic Kingdom and he actually went the, the whole way. And that one we did... Pretty much the same criteria. We we kind of we had planned it out and then we like made up criteria on the fly as we were as we were going. So I think we had started with like a ride and a picture and a snack and a pin trade. And then we decided after the first ride or two, we should do a ride where you get your picture taken. So like in each of the ride photos, we hold up like one, two, yeah. three or what park it was in. But that was just kind of made up as we went as we went along. Yeah, that's a good idea because that way you have a picture of you yeah. at each park like that, right? I I actually did that. Everyone that every park I went to, I did one of the rides that had the ride photo, so that yeah. kind of worked out. Cool. We just went and saw a photo pass photographer in all of them. Yeah, no, yeah. that works yeah. too. Yeah. And I saw you put your fingers up. You put one, yeah. two, three, four. Yeah. yeah, that was good. And then we had, I believe his name was Willie, one of the best photo pass photographers I've ever had. He was quite the character. Mm. Just a very sweet old man and probably in his 80s, but loving what he does. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think I've ever done a four-park challenge. I, I may have done one unintentionally before I you know, knew what I knew. To Dave or Tony, I didn't recall. So much. <laughs> yeah, or Michelle. Like, this is probably like pre-COVID. This might have been like in 17 or 18. It didn't last long, but they had a it was like fifteen dollars for a day. Yes, and they had the buses that ran like the behind backstage the park. buses. Yes. so you didn't have to go to security again. Correct. Mm-hmm. And I remember doing that, and I want to say, I, I want to say I did all four, but I don't remember. I know I did at least three, but obviously I didn't utilize everything correctly. Mm-hmm. So we'll just say mm-hmm. this is my first time. This, that was a really cool service. Yeah, right. It was short. It was before COVID. They had park hopping buses, and it was fifteen dollars extra. And you could, you didn't have to go through, you went through security at your first park. Yeah. And then you got on a bus that was actually backstage and they took you backstage to the next park. Okay. And you yeah. Didn't even, yeah. So. Cause like Magic Kingdom, you would leave like, like right behind Carousel Progress. Um, I believe in Hollywood Studios, it was right around that area where actually where we saw Sully. A lot of the same spots we used when we did the um, VIP tour. tour. Mm hmm. And again, I, I'm guessing the reason why they got rid of it is because I want to say half the time I was the only person on the bus. Yeah. But still, I would love to have them bring that back because that was amazing. They probably weren't charging enough for it if you were the only no. one. No. Correct. Or just if, not enough people knew about it. That's yeah, because it wasn't really well advertised. No, it wasn't. But it was fun to like kind of go behind the you know behind the scenes and see some of the stuff you wouldn't normally see like where you see some stuff as you know the back parts of hollywood studios and animal kingdom and see where stuff is stored it was it was fun and then the drivers were pretty knowledgeable so they were kind of telling you stories so it was it was enjoyable michelle would you do it again i probably would but i, I would like to do it with somebody next time mm-hmm. but i i didn't plan for blisters that was the other thing oh no Got a, I didn't actually, I didn't realize until I got done that I had two blisters on the back of my feet or heels. So Ooh. like, I, I think I, the question was like advice for anyone trying it. Yeah. Bring an extra pair of socks to change like <laughs> halfway through. And I think that would be very helpful. Maybe a different pair of shoes if you can. <laughs> so I, I forgot, Dave. I told you I was going to tell you about the last time I did a four park challenge. I said it was different. It was different because it was it was the first, it was leap year of 
2012. It was my 40th. It was the week of my 40th birthday. It was leap day. And it was the first time Magic Kingdom was ever open 24 hours. They did that a couple times after that, but but it was open 24 hours. It was called one extra Disney, one more Disney day or something. And so I got to magic. I got on the bus at four o'clock magic kingdom opened at six. I got on the bus at four o'clock. I was one of the first fools there. And I was I'm at this turnstiles and all the people from main street, the mayor and that late, the suffragette, they were all there. Like, and Mickey and Minnie came out in their pajamas. And so I started at magic kingdom at six they opened the gates. I went in, I went to the Emporium and this was even before merch was a big thing, but somehow I knew I really should go to the Emporium first and get a t-shirt because they're going to run out. We got, as we came to the turnstiles, we got free ears and pins and buttons that said, uh, one more Disney day. And I have, I have the ears, which are probably wrecked right now, but I know where they are. And, a t- and I have a t-shirt that I bought at the Emporium. And then I went and rode Peter Pan and Hollywood Studios had extra magic hours that morning. So I, I rode Peter Pan, I think, at Splash Mountain. And I made a beeline out of there. And I went to Hollywood Studios. And this was back when Toy Story Mania was the most popular ride in Disney. And you had to rush. And the, they would, it would run out of fast passes at 8 o'clock in the morning. And, but anyway, I, I got to Hollywood for early magic hours. And I, like, almost walked on Toy Story Mania. And... I think I rode Toy Story Mania and Rock and Roller Coaster and I left. And then I went to Animal Kingdom and I had a breakfast reservation at Tusker House and I rode the Yeti and the Safari and then I left and I went to Epcot and I rode a couple things. And I had a late lunch reservation at Akershus. I think I was on the deluxe dining plan too, <laughs> which helped, right? So the deluxe dining plan, I went to Akershus I did a couple things at Epcot and then I went back to Magic Kingdom. And I think I left Magic Kingdom at around 930. I had like the last table, the last reservation at Citrico's for dinner that night. So like it was like it was like a 950 reservation. So I had dinner by myself at Citrico's and then I went back to Magic Kingdom and was there all night until six o'clock the next morning. And I went to bed by the time I got on the bus and got back to pop century it was like nine o'clock the next morning (laughs) because the the park they they were special there was a special show on the castle at six when it closed right before it closed and then all the people shuffling out and by the time i got the bus and it was it was almost eight o'clock and then by the time i got got to bed it was nine (laughs) o'clock how how was being like at magic kingdom at three in the morning it was cool, but you know what? That was back in my days when I was very involved in the Diz boards. So they had they had like a meetup at two o'clock in the morning at the People Mover. A bunch of them met, and and uh, I think I think Teresa and Kathy were there from from the Diz from the Diz Unplugged, and uh, so we rode the People Mover with them. But you know, it's really interesting. I talk about this all the time that I was involved in that group. I was very active in that group, and even when I went to the meetups. I, you know, I'd see people, I'd say, I'd say, you know, I'd say, say Michelle was there. I'd say, hi, Michelle. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Tony. I'm from Florida. Where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. And then we just all go our separate ways and we'd never see these people again. And we'd never talk to these people again. It's so different than our community. I don't, I don't know why it's different. I don't know why. It might be what Kurt says that he's had the people on his, on the podcast. And so they're invested in the community. And I, I think maybe that, that might've been it. I don't know. I want to see the parks be open 24 hours again because I've be never awesome. experienced that. And I could see us being the nerds we are riding oh, Peter we, Pan or oh, something yeah. like that at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. Well, well now, yeah. Tony wants to get up at 2 a.m., do a 5K <laughs> in Epcot, and then go and do a four-part challenge, and then go close down Disney Springs for dinner. And so, I'm 52. And, and, I'm supposed to meet, and I'm supposed to meet Holly for drinks after dinner. I'm supposed to meet Holly for, dr- for French roast. <laughs> You can go all the way over to Grand Fl- Riviera. Okay. The French roses are, but I don't know. We might not you, have a French rose. That's gonna be, you're gonna be exhausted the next day. Yeah, I I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe oh, we'll I, do it on Saturday. I did think that we could do it on Saturday, but then our breakfast is at ten. I can move it up earlier, but then I'm not gonna want to get up. We're not gonna want to get up. No, I don't really like to eat before ten. So, no. oh well. <laughs> Dave. Okay. A Twelve hour day is fine. 
And and apparently I'm 57, even though I'm only 52. Because I, I said it on the live stream the other day, on the, the live on Facebook. I said, oh, I'm about to celebrate my 57th birthday. <laughs> what the heck? I just added five years to my life. I do that every time. Like, anytime somebody asks me how old I am, I always round up a year. I don't know why. I know. You've told me you're 35, and I'm like, you're not 35. What are you talking I'm about? I'm 35 for five years. <laughs> This is why I like being born in 1980. It makes the math easy. 35 for five years after they're 35. I'm 35 for five years before I'm 35. No, Andy, Michael was born in 2000. So literally whatever year it is, he's that age. So in 2024, he's 24. Sydney's the same same way. way? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. David? Um, How old are you going to be in 2024? I was born in 60, so it's easy for me too. Oh, yeah. You're the same. You you end in the, the, the number. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've, I, okay. Back to the fourth part challenge. <clears throat> Enough with this age stuff. I was about to start singing Beatles songs to you when I'm <laughs> sixty-four. No, you don't know how old you are, so whatever. Okay. <laughs> I've done a four-part challenge, and I really enjoyed it because it was me and my daughter Olivia, and we decided to do it. It was kind of a spontaneous thing, and we just said, "Let's do it." We did it, and I, I for me, it was kind of a one-and-done thing. Like mm-hmm. I don't really want to. I could, you know, whatever. But t- Michelle, I like the fact that you said that if I ever do it again, I'd want to do it with a, somebody else or some other people. I think doing it with a bunch of people, like get a big group together, that would be a blast to do it and yeah. go hang out all day and just go to all the parks and and but have a criteria. Say we got to do a ride and maybe a picture, and you don't want to get too much on your plate because then you're going to take away from it. But I think that's the way to do it in a, in a nice big group. I agree. My favorite part of the one we did in 2022 was on rock and roller. We did rock and roller coaster because that was the picture. Mm -hmm. And it was Bubba, me, and Rebecca. So there was three of us. So there's a four, four seater. And we said, okay, we're going to do the rock and roll sign on one hand and three, I think it was our third park, three on the other hand for the picture. So Bubba turns to the kid that's the random kid that's sitting next to him and says, Uh okay, we're doing the four park challenge. And this is our third park. And you're going to mess up the picture if you're just there. So I do have the rock and roll side on one hand and three on the other hand. And the kid just looked at him like we thought for sure this kid's not doing this. He looked at him like we had six heads. And then sure enough, we get the picture and the kid's doing the rock and roll. Oh, well, that's it's a good, good thing you dumped Andy for Bubba because I don't think Andy would have got the kid to do it. Oh, God, no. <laughs> we were having a hard time doing it ourselves. We're like practicing. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. It's hard to do. So, so Dave, maybe we could do it. Maybe we could do it at Geeky Crushmas. Okay, oh, so can we can can we talk about this now? That last on last week's Geeking on Walt Disney World podcast, it was kind of decided. Nobody talked to us that we are in fact going forging forward with December the weekend no, of December sixth. No We've been talking about it for months. We've watched things. Okay, nobody talked to Dave. Okay. But I'm fine with it. I'm okay with I it. I guess the weekend of December 6th, there will be a, a meetup. So if you're DVC, you should go look because I think all that's left is Saratoga, if I'm not mistaken. Everyone who's booked is staying at Saratoga anyway. So there'll be a lot okay. of us at Saratoga. All right. Well, I'll be wherever Michael wants to stay because apparently I'm not allowed not to bring Michael to, to official meetups. Because he's not. Everybody who says, what? where's Michael? <laughs> Everybody wearing the Michael's Minute shirts. True. So. I will say, I'm seeing you three times this year, and none of them are Michael trips, so I'm going to need to plan an extra trip to Aww. see you. Aw. Well, it's December. Yeah. All right, David. You got anything All right, else? All right, Tony Ann. No, this is fun. I, 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 you know what? I would do a, I would do a four-part challenge with all you guys. That's what I would do. That sounds fun. So, Tony, what's our plan for next weekend? Do we have one? No, now I'm even more confused. I'm even more confused. Real quick, on the four park challenge, I was was mentioning this to to Samantha. I said, I think the like for me, the next challenge, and I think this would be easier to do by myself, is I would like to do it and finish it before two o'clock, which was what the previous time was before you could park hop. Oh yeah. So I think that'd be a fun challenge. My son and I are going to do that by yourself. Yeah, because I. Who's going to show you where to go? Um, <laughs> I'm going to wear my map. You can my lost map your shirt. at 9 a.m. and not ever make it out. I'll be FaceTiming you. <laughs> Samantha. 
No, I would just go the easy rides. That's why I would do like People Mover and just, you know, mm-hmm. kind of go easy ones. But Harrison and I are going at the end of March, and I think I talked to him about doing the doing a four park challenge one day. We would do something similar, like we'll get a snack. Like he had us, he had a. We were down there in twenty twenty one or twenty two. One of the two, like his goal was to have like a Mickey shaped snack in mm-hmm. every park. Ooh, which is harder to do than you think. Mm-hmm. Go like, okay, we had a pretzel, and then yeah, like he's not an ice cream bar fan, so it's like that. Mm-hmm. So it's like we did that. We did like the one, um, that was it, a uh, breakfast roll or whatever you called that we had. Oh, the, the one cinnamon morning. bun, cinnamon bun, cinnamon bun. But it's Ooh. like, go to the confectionery. They have candy stuff apples there, with the yeah. Beers. So, yeah. and then he got, and then after a while he got full, so we we abandoned that. So yeah, well, that was like Michael and the candy around the world. We did a we did a world showcase instead of drinking around the world. We did candy around the world, and by the time we got like to Japan, he was like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound amazing though yeah i will say the one the one i know you put on there like the tips we did genie plus mm-hmm. mostly because i had never done genie plus before so i was like let me give this a try and i wouldn't use it for a four-part challenge no what do you Santa? what about the when we booked i successfully booked <laughs> the um guardian's virtual queue i also probably wouldn't do guardians on a four yeah because that kind of hamstrung us when we had to get back to um tapcot where if we wouldn't have done that we may have you know done a different way especially since we were going back to Epcot that night to mm-hmm. surprise deirdre and i would say um i know samantha did this when they did it i would end the night in a little victory celebration and do like a, a sit down meal you know, yeah. both times she's done it was Le Cellier, and we had an amazing, a really nice dinner that night, too. So that was a good way to kind of relax. And Rebecca and I celebrated with a nice bottle of champagne, but I couldn't convince anyone at our table to get a nice No, I just, had a gla- I just had a glass of wine, so. Well, we're going to go to uh, Morimoto if we do it on my birthday, so. That's we'll a good celebration. That's a pretty good celebration, yep. Well, I don't know. I'm still undecided. I think I might do it. No, we'll have to see, Sam. I don't know we should do it. That's a fun birthday. Okay. All right. We'll do it. You twisted my arm. Yeah. Then next year, we'll be talking about doing the parkeology challenge where you ride every single ride in every yeah. single park in one day. My next challenge that I want to do, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but I want to do the coast to coast six parks in one day. Oh, I've yeah. seen that. I've seen people who do that. They do all the Disney, all, all the world Disney parks, world and they go in a plane yeah. and go ride all the, go to both Disneyland parks. And the thing is, you'd have to plan it because we were kind of talking about it. It's like you'd have to plan it to like optimize like the weather because if you wait to do it during the summer, you fly out in the afternoon in Orlando, and half the time your flight's delayed because of of weather and thunderstorms. Storms. storms yeah. Yeah. You got to kind of plan ahead. It's like, okay, do I do it in like the, the spring? Um, but that that does sound like it would be fun. You've got to look at what that park hours are on both coasts Correct. and figure out the ideal day to do it. Same with same with the parkology challenge. You have to look at the park times to see if yeah. you can make it work. And that one's harder because oh yeah, there's things that don't run. At- yeah, the uh, the because they include those Main Street vehicles. Those it's only run till like run ten. Like- oh wow! Yeah. And then the the Liberty Bell, yeah. you know, only runs during the daylight and stuff like that. yeah. Now would be the time to do it because because Country Bears is closed and Splash Mountain is yeah. closed. <laughs> well, Rock and Roller Rosie. Things that move. Like the shows aren't in that. Yeah, I don't think you have to do the sh- I don't think you have to do the shows. No, I don't think you have to do the shows. But I think Carousel Progress is on it because it moves. Maybe. Can we know. can we talk real quick? Like our highlight of the four park challenge. Oh yeah. What was your um, favorite thing? Our favorite my favorite thing is so we wrote when we went to Hollywood Studios. We rope drop Mickey and Minnie's, and then we had a return time for um, Tower mm-hmm. of Terror, and we were on Tower of Terror right before we were getting ready to do the drop. Mm-hmm. It shut down, and the lights came on, and they, you know, we were maybe 10, 15 minutes, and they made the announcement saying, making it feel like we were going to get evacuated. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, we crept forward to the drop, and we did the drop with the lights on. Oh. No sound, no anything. It was like, and Samantha got video, but it was like equally like fascinating and a little bit of creepy because afterwards we're like, well, was there supposed to be music? Was there supposed to be this? There is a soundtrack. I, I pulled up an old yeah. video. Well, uh-huh. and then we ended up writing it again a couple days later. 
Yeah. Um, and discovered, but that was like, it was fun. Did they just do one drop? No. Just no, get you off? That was the one weird part. It was like, a lot. with the lights on. And I was yeah. like, does it, I had to keep telling myself, like, they have I'm cameras everywhere. They know we're here. They know we're going through this because it felt like we shouldn't be doing this. Like, the last announcement was our cast member will be with you shortly. And nobody played, uh, any songs on their phone? Yeah. No, no we didn't no have that type. Of, uh, we didn't have that type of group. Um, and we did get a complimentary fast pass that we we did not use. Okay. Michelle, did you have any favorite moments on your fi- four park challenge? I had a really good um, interaction with Goofy at Magic Kingdom. That nice. was just a fun, you know, character meet and greet. Aww. So I think that was the most fun I had there. Or awesome on the day. And it was getting towards the end of the day, so I was glad for that. <laughs> and one, you know, when we did the, the snack in each park, um, yeah. we did take advantage of, of the food booths. Mm-hmm. Oh, when yeah. we were at Epcot, so we actually did more than one snack. I think we ended up, which, and then we spent more time at Epcot, but I think we hit up like three or four food booths before we left the cool. park. Cool. And that was not my f- favorite moment of that day, Andy. What, what was, was yours? your favorite moment? Oh, surprise. Surprise. Aw. And then she turned and goes, I hate you. <laughs> yeah, because Deirdre, Deirdre watches Samantha's location on her phone. Actually, I think she has a lot of people's location. She She's does. very unassuming. She's like, you yeah, know what? Well, we have, let me let me get your location so we so yeah. we can find each other later. And so now she's sitting in Wisconsin watching all of us. Yes. Hi, Deirdre. Hi. Hi, I know. Yeah. She's like, she's following me and she's getting texts. She's like, do you know Samantha's phone's been, her, her location? I turned my location day. off. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I noticed that too. I'm like, do you, do you think everything's okay? Do you, she's like, I think she's with him. Like, she, she's wow. not. Um, uh-huh. And then I had to distract. So then, well, well I sent him ahead of me. I sent ahead for like five, ten minutes, and then I was, I very much bored Deirdre with a uh, a story, and then she's like, uh-huh, to be honest, uh-huh. she might not listen to this podcast episode because she's heard about this day in detail from me. Correct. <laughs> but Dave's on, so she'll listen. Yeah, that's true. Correct. Mm-hmm. All right. That was my part. So she texted me saying, like, your location's off. I think that seems suspicious. And I was just like, huh, that's weird. And started sending her old pictures from my apartment of trying on outfits for the trip and was like, what do you think about this? I'm only halfway done packing, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh-huh. And then I started really gaslighting her, sending her pictures of her and Andy's location together. I'm like, I can't believe you guys are together without me. Don't have any fun. You almost screwed up. I did screw up, but she didn't notice. Yeah. I forgot to delete. I forgot to crop it so that she couldn't see that I'm also only one mile from, from her. <laughs> Point one miles. <laughs> I think you did get her, though. We, she told me the story. Yeah. And at first she said, I was a little suspicious, but then I was like, no, she really isn't here. And then, yeah. yeah so I think you did. You did a good job. Yeah. So I thought for sure all afternoon, like she's she's either on her way here or she's here already. And then in the last hour, I was like, oh, I guess she's really not here. And I told Dana, I was like, she's going to be so like, call me, you little jerk or whatever. <laughs> I like her to me. She goes, I hate you. Better right. than what she called me later that night. So we're good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. No, we're not going to talk about that. That's no, on, I know. Uh, Dis- Disney party. Crush After Dark. Yep. David, let's wrap this up before we get in trouble. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate the four part challenge. It sounds like it was success for all of you guys. Um, if you guys want to do a four part challenge, go for it um, and see if you might want to do it again. Do it with a group. I, I suggest doing it with a group. Uh, Tony Ann, this is a Wednesday and uh, happy birthday. Your birthday comes up this Friday. Mm-hmm. So happy birthday to you and your run that you're going to be doing. I hope you do that. You, or your walk, your run. Second, two, five, two. Your, yes. Yes, that's correct. So congratulations on that. And um, yeah, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. I guess I can wake you up at midnight and wish you happy birthday. Oh, have to wake God. Up at two morning to, to five Randy, will, Randy will FaceTime you. No, th- no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Thank that's going to do it for this week's Disney Crush podcast. So until next week, we'll see you guys later. Say goodbye, Bye. everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.